let's just dive into it. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. The tape that I've opened is here, just so you guys can see what I'm seeing. And we're going to run some, these assets. We just kind of pulled them up randomly, and I've copied those addresses. All right. So first thing we're going to do is start a new file. I typically name the project. This is just how I do it. You guys can do it any way you want. The same name as the address. We're going to go ahead and open it. And we're going to, I'm going to show you a couple of tricks that we do to kind of save time as we're going through the analysis. And it has to do with uh, looking at the AM schedule and also going through the analysis rather than doing a, a full fetch all, just going through some of the valuations and, um, and maybe even the demographics. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to enter the address. The first thing that, that I do want to, once I have this information embedded is go straight to the AM schedule. And the reason I do that is because it, it tells me right off the bat a lot about the note itself. First thing that I see off the bat is that there's a difference between the uh, UPB or the balance that the seller has sent us and what we've calculated to be the true UPB based on the AM schedule information that the seller's given us. The difference in this case is 21,173. So we know that that difference is going to be fees tacked onto the original loan balance. It's going to be a loan modification potentially. It could be a lot of things. We just don't know. And that information hasn't been provided to us. So we have to assume at this point that that's non-interest bearing, even though some of it may be. It's a question that has to be posed to the seller. But we're going we're gonna to move forward. Um, with the notion that this is non-interest bearing and we're going to put that in a corporate advance account, but we're not going to do it right now. We're going to do it a little bit later. Second thing that, that we're looking at are the delinquencies. We can see that there's 18 delinquent payments. We can see that they started their payments in 2016. The payment was 1,164 and sometime in 2021, they went delinquent and they've been delinquent for roughly around a year. So right off the bat, this tells us that this person bought the home, got into some trouble, maybe lost their job and was unable to make the payment. Right now, to fully reinstate this loan, it's going to cost them $42,000. And by the way, uh, thank you, Cindy, for your question last month, because that question led to putting this information into the AM schedule, which I think uh, it'll be beneficial to everybody. Uh, what we did was we, we added a fully reinstatement uh, amount a, pull, a full payoff and the interest owed on the delinquent payments. So we can see there's 42,000 in order for that borrower to get current. Okay, that's that's actually quite a bit of money. So um, we also can see that they're one, one and a half years delinquent. We can see that total payoff is 200, 275,000 and just the interest alone that they owe on those delinquent payments is 11,000. With that, we're, we're going to go into the input sheet and we're going to analyze it. Uh, so we're going to click analyze. I'm just going to look at valuation at this point. So I'm going to get the property details and that's going to quickly bring in the, the property details from the data that we're purchasing. And we can see that this is uh, set to square feet. So I'm going to change that. We're going to bring in the comps. Okay. And this is going to give us just an idea of the valuation. And then if we see that there's value in this, we'll move forward. If not, we'll, we'll move on to the next one. And so here's the comps. Now, the average on these comps is, is 508,000. So we can see that the UPB is 263. So there's definitely equity in here. So with that information, uh, I would go ahead and continue to do the analysis. And because we started this way, uh, the next thing I'd bring in would be the image just to kind of see what the property looks like. 
and then the um, demographics, and then finally, uh, the electronic values is what I call them, just the valuations from sites like Redfin and Zillow and stuff like that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get the demographics. Now, the reason I brought the image in first is because I like to see if this, you know, is a rundown home, if it's fairly new, what's going on with it. Uh, the other thing I like to do is hit the Google Maps button to take a look at when that image was potentially created. And so when we go in here, you'll see at the very top, every time you open up Google, there's there's a date down here. And this is saying this is fairly recent in 2022. And this looks like a, a, a very nice house. Uh, it looks like it's well manicured. Somebody is taking care of it for sure. And they have some pride of ownership in there, which actually coincides with the AM schedule we looked at where um, initially, you know, they, they they were paying for, you know, I think it was two years or three years and then went delinquent. So that's a good sign. Now we'll come back and we'll fi finish it off with the electronic values and then we'll run some calcs on it. and. We'll, we'll try to tell the story and figure out what we can bid on it and what our ranges are. And so when we're, when we're getting our, our values back in, what I'm doing is I'm comparing these values to the comps that came in. One of the uh, new features that we, we just added in one of the updates is the sold uh, column here. What this does, what we did was we were when we get our comps, our comps come in, you know, we get like 20 or 30 comps and obviously we can't put 20 or 30 comps in here. So what we're doing is we're taking the most recent and closest comp, closest to the square footage of the subject property as we can. So what I like to do is I like to look at the highs and lows here. Now the high being around 560, the low being around 380. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and run my calcs. I, I'm also looking at the big sites out there and their valuations, the lowest being 490 and the highest three, 560, 536. So our ARV that came back is coming back at 515, which is pretty good. Our as is value came back at 334, which is probably really low given the condition of the property and what it looks like. So what I like to do here is one of two things. I'll bring it up or close to the ARV, like maybe in the 480 range, or I'll come down to the lowest comp and I'll put that value in here. And usually um, that's, that's mostly what I'll, I'll do. Once I have this information in there, I'll take a look at my um, my strike price. Now my strike price is automatically set at 55 cents on the dollar uh, or 55 cents of UPB. Uh, the seller in this case is asking for more. Usually they're in the range on these non-performing notes if they're in good condition and grade A type assets, they're looking anywhere from 65 to 85. So we're gonna we're gonna put this around the 70 range right now, and then we're gonna rerun our um, offer, and now we're at 184,000 for our offer, which is 70% of UPB. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here, and we're gonna look at the story here, and and what's gonna what's unfolding. When we look at the AM schedule, we know that they have had made payments for, you know, from 2016 to 2020. So four years of payments, something happened in 2021, somebody lost a job, something happened where they couldn't make any more payments. What does that tell us? It tells us that because this, this property is in, in good condition and there's pride of ownership, there's, it's highly likely that they're going to want to work out some kind of deal in order for the, for the borrower to fully reinstate, it's going to cost them twenty thousand dollars. The equity in their house is at two hundred fifty-one thousand, so it's in their best interest to want to work this out. So, what this what this uh, analysis is telling us is that this is a high contender for um, a reinstatement of a loan. 
and it's it's probably a very good possibility that you will reinstate it. In the event that it doesn't get reinstated, you're you're still in very good positions. So if it goes to foreclosure, I've set my minimum bid at 20%, which basically means the minimum I'm willing to make is 20% at foreclosure auction. I can set this higher, and usually I do. Usually I have it at around 30%. And that basically tells me that my minimum bid has to be set at 249000 which is which is plenty low, I mean, compared to the 515 um on the on the comp on the valuation of it. Now the maximum bid is at 276. In this case, I might even set my minimum bid to the maximum amount. Now there was a question last month about how you calculate the maximum bid, and typically the maximum bid is is set to the same as the full payoff. So we can see up here the full payoff or the loan payoff is. Um, 276,000, which, which coincides with this max bit, um, bid. You can also go to the AM schedule and you can check out the, um, the full payoff here. Now, the reason why there's a difference here is because there's a $21,000 difference between our calculated UPB, which I consider the true UPB and what the seller has given us. What does this mean? This means that, that when we're gonna place our bid, we want to make sure we're placing our bid on this number, not this number, unless the seller gives us more information related to the interest bearing balance. So I'm going to click this button, send difference to IPA, which what it's going to do now is it's going to send that value as the UPB and switch it out. So when we go back to the analysis sheet, we'll see that, um, that that value is now in here and we have the difference under corporate advances down here. So now we're placing our bid based on this UPB uh, and not the balance that the seller's given us. Now you can see in doing that, it's boosted us up to 60 or 76% of UPB. If we still wanna maintain that 70%, we're gonna to have to recalculate the, um, the offer. And now we're at 169. So that, that's how you, you can start uh, looking at your strike prices, making sure that you're in the right ranges and, um, and start to tell that story. We know that this is, this is a high contender for uh, a re-performer. The internal rate of return in this case is around, which is basically our yield is around 9%. I'm looking for 8% and above, that's my margin. So, um, so this is, this is a, a great one to move forward with. In the event something happens, it goes south or whatever, you're in a great position for foreclosure. You're in a very good position also to take the property back because of the equity in it. Because if it doesn't sell at foreclosure, you actually are entitled to that equity. And um, you'll, you'd actually make a lot of money on it. It's um, If we look at the rental down here, we're looking at of, it's a very good rental as well. You're looking at a 32% um, ROI on that, which is really, really good. And uh, it's probably not a fix and flipper because it's it's uh, a fairly new home. Now I've spent a little bit more time on this just to kind of run through it. A lot of times when we look at these, we're looking at them really quick. We're looking at these numbers quick, but I'm trying to go through the process here of explaining what we're looking at. The next one we go through, we'll will be a little quicker. This one would go on the list as, um, let's look into it further. Let's do some further due diligence, look for liens on the property um, and, and um, maybe even get into uh, an exceptions report if, if needed. But in order, in order to move forward with this, all I really need is the information that I have right now doing some, some, a little bit more due diligence on, on liens and whatnot, and then um, submitting my indicative bid based on the information the sellers provided us. And then when the seller comes back and says, here's all the information and the information is in, to the contrary of what you received, then that's when you can fade bids and negotiate, which is done all the time. Okay, so 
Another feature that, that we haven't talked about in IPA 2.0 is that you can actually have multiple screens open. So what I'm going to do is minimize this. I'm going to go ahead and open up IPA again. And the reason I'm doing this is because I could have four or five of these open and I could be looking at my best products and, and maybe I only want to bid on two and I can kind of isolate those two by doing that. I'm going to uh, pull up another address here. All right. So we're going to do this next one here and put the address in. We're going to do the same process. Okay. Now, right off the bat, before we even move any further, there's an issue with the loan itself, which basically means that the UPB has exceeded the original loan balance. And there's some kind of loan modification on it or fees or something attached to it. If we go to the M schedule, it'll say the same thing and it'll give you that difference. So when we've calculated it, we're calculating the UPB, the true UPB at 115 and the balance that the seller has given us is at 129, which is a difference of 13,000. When we look at the AM schedule here, we can see again, same kind of story. They had a payment of $655, started the loan in 2017, went delinquent in 2021, roughly a year, same kind of situation. And the fully reinstated amount for them to get current on the loan is 25,000, almost 26,000. Mm -hmm. Full payoff is at 138,000 and they owe 8,800 for interest. So with that, I'm gonna go into the analyzer sheet and we're gonna do this one where we just do a full a full fetch all. And this is just going to go out and pull everything in for us. Usually this process takes anywhere from one to three minutes. It really depends on the information. You know, I'm looking at the demographics. It's in a hot market, which is good. I'm looking at the image, the image, it's an all brick home. It, it's probably older. It's 1963. So um, there could be some work that needs to be done, especially on the inside. And um, the valuations are coming back in the 280 range. I have the highest right now at 305 and the lowest around 300, or no, uh, two, lowest is 249. So our average is uh, around 288 which I think is, is probably right, right in the sweet spot for, for the valuation of this property. Now, going on, going on what I said before, I'm going to take the lowest comp, the 249, and I'm going to put it here in the A as is value. All right. And right now we're, we're looking at our valuation set at 55 cent, cents um, of UPB. Keep in mind our UPB has a difference in it right now, so we might want to uh, modify that. But what, what we're trying to do is just determine right off the bat if this is even worth moving forward with. And if I go to my AM schedule and I send that difference to IPA and I go back to the analytics sheet and I set my, uh, my strike price at 70% rather than 60%, whatever it is now, and I run my offer, I'm at 81,000, which is 70% of the true UPB. And in order for the borrower to reinstate, it's at 25,000, the equity is at 172, so they're in a good position to reinstate that loan. Our yield is at 11%, which is more, which is above our 8% requirement. And um, when we look at our foreclosure, our foreclosure, uh, again, the maximum is what I'm looking at right now. It's at 138, which is far below the value. So our return on that maximum bid is 56%. So we're looking really good there if it does go to foreclosure. If we take the property back, and we're at the minimum amount, the 249 sell it as is, we're looking at um, a very high return because of the equity in it. Uh, the rental looks good. Uh, we're looking at a 35% return there. So everything's in the positive here. 
Now, if the if the seller is asking for a higher percentage of UPB and they have an argument that, you know, we based our color on the balance that we gave you, then, you know, you can you can further do some analysis to see whether it's worth uh, moving forward with. But again, this is one that I would save and move forward with uh, on this property. We're gonna go and open up another one. Take a look. So this is one where we do have a difference again, 21,000. It's almost the same story where they made a lot of payments uh, from 2016 to 2020, went delinquent for about a year. And sometimes you see like a pattern on tapes where they're the same type of product where maybe the interest rate is around a certain, we can see that they're, they're fairly low at the 3.25%. I think that it's been between three and four and a half percent of what we were looked at. What we can see here is there's a reinstatement of 42,000, which is more than what we've seen before. A year and a half delinquent, the payoff is 275. And we have a difference here uh, for the uh, unpaid principal balance, which we're gonna have to take into consideration later. We're gonna go right into the analysis. And the first thing we're gonna do is run the property details and then get, you can get the comps. So let's go into property. And we're gonna look at the comps. So it looks like our high is around 574, low is 380. I'll change this to square footage. So before I go any further, I do have highs and lows and I can run my uh, calcs just based on the information that I have without even having an image or anything. Okay. So we're at about 508,000. We're at 55% of UPV. We we'll probably want to be at 70. And we're probably going to want to go back to our AM schedule and send the difference to IPA. So what we can see now is that our internal rate of return, let's go back to 70%. Our yield is at 9.1, and that's only if they pay back this 42,000 to fully reinstate the loan. The equity is at 265,000, and um, when we look at the maximum bid or the full payoff, we're at 275, which puts us at 55% or 55% on our return which is good because that 275 is far under the 508,000. So the likelihood of it selling at foreclosure is really high. Probably not gonna get it back from foreclosure to wholesale it, but if you did, you're looking at a very, very sizable um, return. Uh, we probably wanna adjust our foreclosure time lot to 12 months. Right now it's set to one. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that on 12. And the reason I'm doing this is just to kind of dial it in further to see where we where we really are. So in this case, we're just above that 8% mark. That's our margin. Uh, there is some risk in this one in moving forward because it is because you don't really know how much time it's going to take to fully reinstate it or what type of loan modification, if any, that you're going to do on it. Um, it's probably unlikely that you're gonna get cash for keys for it. You're gonna do some kind of workout with them because their equity is so high. And to re reinstate this, they're at 42. So the loan modification might be something like moving this to the back end of the loan um, and keeping the payments as they are. And if that's the case, then we're looking at that 3.25% 3, 3 return. So 
when you do that loan modification, you have to keep that in mind and, and make sure that you're hitting your mark, whatever that is, as far as your return. In this case, I would pass on this simply because uh, I don't think that reinstating this loan is going to is going to hit the mark that I want it to hit. So um, I would just move on and then move on to the next one. Now, I know that we're uh, we've got about 10 minutes left. Hey, Joe, real quick, do you have a question uh -huh. from Stanley? Um, question is, um, is that a general rule of thumb to send the amortization difference into IPA and work off that number? If the seller has provided you with information above the true UPV and given you an idea of what's interest bearing and what's not, whether or not there's loan modification, whether or not there's fees to act on, then you can use their their balance. But you have to know what you're buying because otherwise you're leaving money on the table. If you if you place your bid on the balance that they gave you, and which was in this case, you're leaving twenty one thousand dollars on the table because you don't know whether or not that's recoupable. You have no clue until you get the collateral files and uh, or until the, the, the seller answers your questions. Now, most of the time, what you're doing is you're placing an indicative bid based on the information they've provided you. Now, the information they provided us was a balance, but it wasn't the UPB. And when we calculated the UPB, we saw there was a $21,000 difference. We have to assume at that point that that is non-interest bearing because we don't know any different the likelihood of there being some interest bearing money in there is pretty high, but we just don't know what that is. So we place our bid based on, on that notion. And if the seller comes back and says, well, your bid's too low, you say, well, it's right on the mark of what you were asking for, 70% of UPB. Uh, the UPB is this, this is 70% of it. Uh, there is a difference and this is difference. If you can tell me what this difference is, then you know I'm, I'm willing to raise my bid. And that's usually how, how it goes down. But in most cases, you're not going to get collateral file and you're not going to get a whole lot of response from the seller until they've accepted your bid and you're in your due diligence phase of, the, uh, of funding the loan. So when you're in that due diligence phase and you find out that out of that 21,000, only 10,000 is interest bearing, you can add $10,000 to that on to that balance and you can use that in your calculations rather than you know subtracting the 21,000 that we talked about before. Hopefully that answers your question Stanley. My goal was to actually go through quite a few few more of these but I think that it's important for me to explain what I'm looking at and why I'm doing what I'm doing as I'm looking through these because you know, if it was just me and I didn't have an audience and I wasn't talking about it, I'd probably go through 10 or, or 20 of these in an hour because that's how easy it is. But, and, and you guys will get used to it once you know what to look for. I wanted to point out some of the indicators here of how we do it, what we look at and what we look for and how we can start telling the story of what's going on with the borrower and with the paper or the loan. In some cases we, we've seen recently where a loan will come in and it'll be interest bearing only. And, you know, the seller doesn't even know that because the seller is, you know, a small mom and pop seller and they don't even know what's going on with the loan. IPA is um, basically an analyzer for uh, principal and interest loan, not an interest only loan. And if we want to do a calculation on interest only loan, we need to we need to know what we're buying and we need to know what kind of return we're going to get uh, and, and whether or not it's likely that we're going to get that balloon payment at the end. So um you can make money on interest only loans, but you got to know what you're doing and you got to know what you're looking at. When was it purchased? How long was the, the loan? And what kind of equity does it have over the time that it was held? If we look at the past two to five years, prices have gone way up. You know, they're starting to level off and come down a little bit now, but prices have gone way up. So if you look at interest bearing only over the last two to five years, you can find some gems in there. Anyway, that's a whole nother topic and a whole nother story. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. So hopefully I was able to illustrate my point today. Uh, if not, 
let me know, give me some pointers. Uh, I'd like to fine tune these for you guys and really make sure that you guys are getting as much information as you can out of this and learning how to use this as a tool to move forward with your note purchases. Yeah, just uh, Cindy made a comment. Uh, good job on IPA. Uh, it's a great tool. Instructions have been very helpful. So good job, Joe. Um, I'm going to say as a real estate investor, obviously note investor as well, I utilize the IPA for investing in real estate as well. I like the, uh, the right, right side of the, uh, of, of the process of what it shows here gives you the different strategies. Um, that's kind of where my mindset is as well as, as the notes. So I love this tool in that way that helped me in my um, investigations on my properties as well. Anything else, Joe? Next one, we might take a look at maybe real estate and how we can look at it uh, from a BRR standpoint if we're doing rentals or maybe flips or something like that. So I'll mm -hmm. give you guys heads up on that. Yep. All right. Perfect. You guys take care. Hi. Everybody. Thank you for joining us.